You're about to hear The Whistler. But first, a special announcement for California listeners only. Beginning next week with California Daylight Saving Time, The Whistler will be heard in California only one hour later at 8.30. Remember, this time change to 8.30 is for California listeners only. And now, the Signal Oil Program. The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Return Engagement. There was nothing left now, a crumbling profile, a book of press clippings that were yellower than they ought to be, a few pats on the back from people who wanted to be kind, that was all. Yes, Elliot Dorn was dead, as an actor at least, his career murdered in cold blood with ten inches of newsprint. And there was nothing left for Elliot now that the play had closed, but a burning hatred for the man who had done it, a drama critic named Sheldon Craig. Two days of brooding alone in a hotel room can do things to a man's mind. And by the second evening, it seemed to Elliot not only natural, but just that the murder of his reputation be avenged with murder of a more concrete sort. It was eight o'clock, and he stood at the window of his room looking down at the sea of sparkling lights, Times Square, Broadway, the Empire State. Yes, it was going to be hard to leave it all. Yes, Joe Randall at the airport. Oh, Joe, how did it come out? I got clearance to Dallas. Dallas? What do you mean? I had to tell him something. Where we go when the wheels leave the ground is our business. Oh, I see. We'll sit down somewhere in Texas for gas. Cross the border before daylight. Hmm. From then on, we can take our time. Good. When can we take off? 11.30 tonight. Be out here with your baggage at 11.15. All right, Joe. I'll be there. You hang up the phone and look at your watch. It's 8 o'clock, Elliot. There's plenty of time. You can have dinner, perhaps a drink afterward. Stroll across town to Sheldon Craig's apartment. Chat with him for a few delicious minutes before you calmly take the gun from your pocket and shoot him down. Yes, it's come to seem so simple, hasn't it, Elliot? Two days alone in a hotel room can do things like this. You hate him. You'll kill him. You'll find a new life in Mexico or Point South. It's as simple as that. There's a pair of martinis and a good dinner under your belt at 10 o'clock as you press the buzzer outside his apartment. Note that hanging from the doorknob is the usual do not disturb on pain of death. Oh, Dawn. Good evening, Sheldon. You don't mind, Dawn. I'd rather you call another time. Oh, I'm time. afraid I have to insist. Oh, I see I must now add to your already staggering list of shortcomings that you can't read. I'd hoped the sign on the door now. Oh, oh, now, Sheldon, that certainly doesn't refer to me. Why, we've been comrades in arms too come, long. Come, come, Dawn. Why are you here? Let's get it over with. Well, you're not going to keep me out here in the entrance hall, I hope. I'd prefer to keep you in the basement. But if you're determined... Oh, I am. This way. I suspect you've come to carp about my review of Tall Tower. Hmm? It uh, goes a little beyond that, I'm afraid. A few months ago, I was on my way up again, Sheldon. 
A good review in that play could have done the trick. Oh, really? Now, look, man, what good does it oh, do Listen to... to me, Sheldon. Things began to break for me. There was this part, and more than that, a chance with Judith Haskell next fall, this quiet dust, her new play, the biggest opening of the season. Indeed. I've come to thank you, Sheldon. That review of yours, it was quite effective. Makes it possible for me now to look forward to a life of ease. No parts, no career, no clamoring public. Ah, the actor to the last, the closing speech, the final bow. Oh, stop it, Sheldon. How long did you think you could get by with this pulling strings, playing with people's lives, ruining them, because your, your dinner didn't agree with you the night you saw the play? Who gave you the right to do that, Sheldon? Well, answer me, who? You may shout as loud as you like, my man. The apartment's thoroughly soundproof. And when you're through, you may go as noisily as you can. Oh, you've gone too far this time. This is one sure not Excuse going... Excuse me just a moment. He turns, Elliot, and your hand goes into your coat pocket, grips the handle of the automatic. Leaving it in the pocket, you raise the barrel, point it directly at his back. Your finger finds the trigger. Goodbye, Sheldon. Goodbye. Oh, don't go, Dawn. Not quite yet. Missed fire. It... Come in, Judith. Uh-huh. Judith. You know Miss Haskell, of course. Why, why, Judith, what are you doing here? Well, I seem to have come here for the same reason as you, Elliot. I think Sheldon was most unfair in his treatment of you, and I was telling him so when you arrived. I, I, I have to stop. There's a chair right behind you, Dawn. Do collapse in it. Oh, please, Sheldon. I, uh, I couldn't help overhearing, Elliot, and Yes, I... Dawn, you're a very convincing actor. Everywhere but on the stage. But I can't do much with a lady playwright when she's made up her mind. Uh, oh, what's this all about? I want to use you, Elliot, in summer stock next month. We're reviving an old play of mine, Rendezvous with April. I'm told, Judith, it's against my better judgment, but if I'm wrong, I'll be willing to eat crow. Uh, and if it does work out, Elliot, I'm sure we'll be working together in the new play next fall. Good Lord, and I, I almost... What's the matter, Elliot? You almost what? Oh, well, well never mind, Judith, it... It doesn't matter now. With the prologue of Return Engagement, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. Friends, out here in Hollywood, where The Whistler is produced, this is the time of year when the movie folks make their annual nominations for Oscars. And you know, I've always been sorry that there isn't an Oscar for gasoline, because I'm sure that Signal Gasoline would win the honors for outstanding performance. Not just because of Signal's good mileage that has made it known throughout the West from Canada to Mexico as the go-farther gasoline, but also because of the thing which makes such mileage possible. I mean the extra efficiency today's Signal Gasoline gets from your motor, which also gives you quicker starting, faster pickup, and smoother knock-free power. Yes, that's right. The features a gasoline must have to give you extra driving pleasure also add up to more mileage that you can measure with your own speedometer. That's why Signal says, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. It was almost supernatural, wasn't it, Elliot? Almost as if an invisible hand had reached down and snatched you away from destruction that night in Sheldon Craig's apartment. The night a defective bullet in the chamber of your pistol kept you from killing him with a witness in the next room and destroying in a split second the career Judith Haskell had already saved for you. It's May now, and with the performance of Judith's play only a few days off, you're deep in rehearsals at the Summer Theater in Connecticut, wondering as you run through a scene with the actress if you're making the right impression on Judith. She's sitting out front with Leo Gilmore, the director. Try it again, Elliot. From after your entrance. Then it's been like this and so on. Right. You ready, Alice? Any time. <clears throat> then it's been like this all the time, hasn't it? These evasions and half-truths. They've gone on for months now. Darling, I... I thought you knew. Thought I knew. 
What I'd hold Please, still Please, dear, I... I should have choked the truth from you long ago. I hold should have realized... Hold it. Uh, what's the matter now, Leo? It's terrible. If this goes on, I'll give you both top billing in Madame Tussauds Waxworks. What'll it pay? Oh, never mind the wisecracks, Alice. Well, Leo, how about my playing at stage left? Seems to be more natural if I crossed over. Go and... ahead. I'm ready to try anything. Just get some life into it. Sound all right to you, Judith? I'm just watching, Elliot. Do it your own way, dear. <laughs> of course, anyone knows the real meaning of the scene. It's the person who wrote it. Look, my friend. A five-year-old can tell you the meaning of this scene. A woman makes a confession to her husband. It stuns him. Then it angers him. And he's ready to kill her. All you have to do is believe it. Just hate me a little more, Elliot. Pretend I'm someone yeah, who that's just... It. Look, Elliot. Make a little switch in your mind. You're not talking to Alice at all. It's, uh, well, Sheldon Craig, for instance. Oh, wait a minute, Gilmore. I've taken a lot from you, but I don't have to Shh, take that. Elliot. I'm only trying to be constructive, Elliot. Sounded more like an insult to me. Uh, look, let's drop rehearsals for today, shall we? Everybody's tired and on edge. Oh, it's not that. Judith, it's just... I think you're right, Judith. Well, that's all for today, everybody. Be here at 10 in the morning. Girls, don't forget your... And, uh, Elliot, forget what I said about Sheldon Craig. But you can't forget, Elliot. You spend an hour strolling around the bridle paths near the hotel. Give that up and settle down on the porch. Try to concentrate on a magazine. But the print wobbles before your eyes and your mind keeps focusing on one unassailable fact. Sheldon Craig hates you. And it's in his power to ruin you. This waspish little bantam with his opera cloak and sword cane who plays with theater people as if they were his private puppets. How much will you sell them for, Elliot? Oh, oh, Judith. Uh -huh. What do you mean? Your thoughts. I'll buy them. Oh, I was just reading this magazine. You've been staring into space for ten minutes I was watching. I didn't realize it was so obvious. I, I guess I ought to apologize to you about this morning, Judith. I don't see why. I think I prefer you when you're being venomous about Sheldon. You know, Elliot, he wouldn't bait you if you didn't react so violently. I think he would. It's been going on for 15 years now. Well, he does pride himself on his honesty as a critic. Do you trust his judgment, Judith? I have to consider him, you know. He's ripped into plays of mine more than once. You didn't answer my question. Do you trust him? Oh, Elliot, this is no day for answering questions. It's a wonderful day for driving. Now be a darling and take me into town. You mean New York? Well, why do you think I canceled rehearsals? We'll have cocktails and dinner and be back here before midnight. Why, Judith, I... You're making such a shameless wench of me, Elliot. Is it asking too much oh, I to... No, Judith, not at all. I, I think it's a wonderful idea. Good, let's go. It was a little startling, Elliot, as you sat there looking at her. As the simple, the obvious reason for everything. For her visit to Craig's apartment that night. For this part in the summer play and the promise of next fall. As all of it suddenly became clear. Yes, it seems perfectly natural to you now, Elliot. This woman, this middle-aged playwright, is in love with you. You feel more at home now, more in command of things as you glance sidewise at her during the drive to New York. And in the dim light of the cocktail room that evening, you know you're on familiar ground. Yes, Elliot, that fall opening is in your pocket. How's the martini? Wonderful. Good. Are you watching for someone, Judith? I've noticed ever since we came in that... Frankly, darling, I've been putting off telling you, but I've asked Sheldon Craig to meet me. You what? Oh, he might not like it either, but I thought that if the three of us had dinner, you two might... Oh, wait, there he is. Here we are, Sheldon, over here. Well, if I'd known, I'd have asked for a darker corner. Oh, now stop it. I think it's up to you to straighten things out with him. Sheldon, dear. Ah, Judith, my love. The mere sight of you intoxicates me. Oh, you intoxicate much too easily, Sheldon. Aren't you going to speak to Elliot? I'm already suffering the quickest hangover in history. <laughs> You're not in the theater now, Sheldon. Try to be human, will you? What are you drinking? Oh, wheels revolve within wheels the moment I enter this establishment, my dear. My waiter's coming over here now. Oh, really? Your courvoisier, Monsieur Craig. Thank you, thank you. Well, cheers, everybody. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm the hungriest man in Manhattan at the moment. Right now, Judith, my appetite almost exceeds my love view. That's funny. I've lost mine completely. Elliot, you're not going to stay. If you don't mind, no. But I do mind. After all, that's the one reason I arranged oh, this. Strictly business, eh, Judith? Never mind, old boy. Just run along home and rehearse your life. Oh, please, Sheldon. Elliot, I do. No, really, Judith. I, I'd rather not. I, I've got to get out of here. A delightful exit, my boy. Strength. Character. Purpose. (laughs) 
You're furious as you walk away from them, aren't you, Elliot? As Sheldon's mocking laugh follows you outside. It's still ringing in your ears a few hours later as you drive back to Connecticut after a few more drinks. And there's something else. His voice tearing you down, destroying your chances, undermining you in Judith's eyes. I seldom make mistakes, Judith. Elliot Dorn is simply not an actor, that's all. By the time you arrive at the summer playhouse, you're in the grip of a murderous rage. You run the car into the garage alongside the inn, slam the door as you get out, walk around to the front and settle down in a chair on the porch. It's only a few minutes later that a car drives up. Thanks so much, Sheldon, dear. I really enjoyed the dinner. I too, my dear. Even that delightful bit of ham at the cocktail hour. <laughs> Never mind, Dad. Well, just remember what I told you. Never let sentiment interfere with art. Or business. Good night, Sheldon. Good night, Mark. Have a good time, Judith? Oh, why, Elliot, I didn't realize you were here. I, uh, I've been waiting for you. You could have had dinner with me, you know. I'm sorry about that. So am I, Elliot. You acted very badly. Well, maybe I'm a little mixed up, Judith. Oh? Well, the way you planned it all, asked me to go, I, I thought... What did you think, Elliot? Well... It was important to you that we have dinner alone. It, it was important to me. Because you can't stand Sheldon Craig? Oh, no, Judith. Because, well... Wait a minute. Oh, oh no. Elliot, you're not trying to say that, <laughs> that you're in love with me. Is it so funny? Yes, it's a scream. <laughs> Oh, no wonder you couldn't get the line out. You can only say things like that on the stage, Elliot. Oh, no, wait a minute, Judith. And I suppose you thought I might be falling in love with you. Oh, Elliot, you didn't. Oh, no. Look, I don't quite see that it's so funny. Oh, Elliot, let's be honest with one another. You're in love with yourself. And me? Well, I'm a big girl now. I know all about actors who want parts in my plays. That isn't true, Judith. As far as tonight's concerned, I had one thing in mind. It's extremely important for both of us to be in Sheldon's good graces. That's all. I'm, I'm sorry if I assume too much. Good. Then we'll forget it. I think you can act, Elliot. And that's all you'll have to do to get that part in the fall. I'm not so sure with Sheldon muttering in your ear. Oh, I'll handle Sheldon. In the meantime, you might borrow his suggestion and worry about your lines. I, I hope I haven't messed things up. Too much, Judith. Well, you've done nothing a good performance won't cure. <laughs> good night, Elliot. You watch her turn away, walk through the door to the inn. Your throat feels dry, your neck tight and uncomfortable against your collar. She really struck at your pride, didn't she, Elliot? But it's good to know that you didn't get too far out of line. Now all that remains is the thing Judith asked for, a good performance. You're determined to give one. Somehow, a few nights later, when the curtain goes up in the dress rehearsal and you know that Judith and a number of critics and special friends are out there watching, you suddenly find yourself move into the part like it was written for you. Every nerve keyed to the proper pitch until you know that you can't miss. The play is nearly over when you're aware of something else. Sheldon Craig sitting with Judith, whispering in her ear, and a moment later, the two of them get up and go out. It's all you can do to finish the play now, isn't it, Elliot? Yes, he's finally made Judith listen. And as you move mechanically through the lines and motions before the final curtain, you promise yourself that tonight, the moment you can get away, you'll drive to New York for a showdown with Sheldon Craig. Nice going, Elliot. Very swell. Yes, yes, great, wasn't I? You were, really tough. Yes, so great that Judith walked out before it was even over. Huh? Before my biggest scene, she walked out with Sheldon Craig. Oh, stop talking silly, Elliot, and get out there for another bow. They want you. Probably made my last bow in a theater. Oh, leave me alone, Leo. I'm going to bed. manner of beast comes ringing at the door. Dawn, what the devil? I want to talk to you, Sheldon. Two in the morning? Please, I have a poor appreciation of my own intellect at this hour. I'm sure you have nothing to say that could possibly interest I'm me. I'm coming in, Sheldon. 
I didn't drive all the way from Connecticut for a brush off. But I only just got in myself. I had to stop by the office door, and I'm dead tired, man. Yes, so am I. Of the way you're kicking me around. Huh? We're going to have it out, Shelton, right now. And you can begin by telling me why Judith got up and left with you during the third act. Oh, you notice. Why did she do it? What did you tell her? Oh, my dear fellow, that play of hers ran 300 performances on Broadway, plus her own screen adaptation. You don't think it holds much freshness for her at this late date, do you? Answer my question. What did you tell her about me? Really, Dawn, if this keeps up, I shall have to change my mind about your abilities. Go back to Connecticut. You bore me. Why, you pompous, conceited little... You soured Judith against me, didn't you? Take your hands off me. You please be good enough to stand aside. Once I get my cane from this hat rack, your I'll cane, have it. your sword cane. Oh no, Sheldon. Well, you can't. Oh, but I can, Sheldon. I have the cane now. What is this? Your own sword cane, Sheldon. What could be more appropriate? It's poetic, almost poetic. Don, are you crazy? With your own sword cane. <laughs> Flying service. Joe, this is Dawn again. Look, I said I'd call you. I back. can't wait. I've got to know. But I... tell me, when can we take off? Okay. Tomorrow night for sure. Good. That's all I want to know. But you're going to make sure this time, Elliot. It's a gamble. With Mexico and freedom on one side, your career on the other. You know you still have a chance that it's possible no one knows of your trip to New York. Certainly not of your visit to Sheldon Craig's apartment. So you return to the inn in Connecticut to a day of torture as you wait for the news to break. Uh, the morning papers come in yet, miss? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Dorn, not yet. Oh, I guess I'm just not hungry. What's the matter, Judith? I can't help feeling that something's wrong, Elliot. I can't reach Sheldon at his apartment. Maybe he had to go out of town or something. Well, he didn't say anything last night. I'm going to call him again, Elliot. I'll come with you. No, no, you'd better go on to the theater. It's the benefit show tonight, and we want everything to go right. I'll see you in your dressing room just before curtain. You watch her go, then get up, sign the check, and walk to the theater. It's like waiting for an axe to fall, Elliot. And you almost want to give up right now and get to the airport. But you have to be sure. There might be a chance, Elliot. You may not even be suspected. You're sitting at your dressing table, putting on your makeup when it finally comes. You hear it all through the door. Leo Gilmore talking to your leading lady. Alice. Yes? Have you seen Dawn? I think he's in his dressing room, Leo. Why? What is it? This? You read it? Lord, I can't understand it. What are you talking about? Right here. See? Actor slays critic. What? Here, let me read that. It's all there in black and white. Actor slays critic. Huh. The payoff with Dawn and his old enemy, Sheldon Craig. Oh, Leo, let's go talk to him. Let's knock on his door. There it is, Elliot. They found Elliot. him. And somehow they know. You stare at the door, Elliot, wondering what there? to do. Your eyes go to the window. Elliot. Outside, you pause at the mouth of the alley. There's a crowd in front of the theater. And then you see something that stops you in your tracks. Police cars, Elliot. Several of them swinging in at the curb. Your car's across the street. It's a long chance, but you've got to take it. Oh, Judith. Oh, yes, Leo. Where's Elliot? Have you seen him? Well, not oh, since... Uh, Leo. There he is across the street. Well, Elliot. Well, where's he going? He's acting crazy. Look at that police car. Elliot, look out! Leo, what's the matter with him? The way he's driving. Well, he's going to crash. Elliot, look out! <laughs> return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a little dissertation on the letter S. According to statistics, S is one of the most used letters in the alphabet. We're mighty partial to it, of course, because S stands for signal, S stands for safety, and S stands for service. Put those three words together and you have signal, safety, service, the name we give to those important little extras which you enjoy without charge at dealer-owned signal service stations. 
This month's safety service, being offered by signal dealers throughout the West from Canada to Mexico, consists of a free checkup of your fan belt and radiator hose. Few people, in fact, few service station operators, ever give a thought to the fan belt or radiator hose. Yet, being made of rubber, these two little items can wear out or deteriorate from age and cause trouble in a big way. If your fan belt or radiator hose should be in dangerous condition, you'll be glad to know that in most cases, signal dealers can replace them while you wait. So, for safety's sake, stop by your signal service station soon for this free checkup. It's a swell opportunity to get better acquainted with the more thorough, more conscientious service you get at signal stations. Because each signal dealer owns his own business and has a personal interest in keeping you and your car happy. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, you knew it was a gamble, Elliot. That once again you had a choice between freedom and a career. And it was only too clear from the headlines of the evening paper, from the gathering of police cars outside the theater, which way you had to go. Yes, Elliot, you murdered Sheldon Craig. And in that moment of blind panic outside the theater, you paid the price. How is he, Doctor? Yes, how is he? He won't last the night. Oh, no. There's not a chance. I was afraid of that. What do you suppose got into him, Leo, running out that way, driving his car like a madman? Who knows? <laughs> that cop in the police car was lucky to walk away from the wreck. Great thing to happen at a police benefit. Oh, Leo, there's something terribly ironic about all this. Poor Elliot. For 15 years, Sheldon Craig has hounded him in his column until the rehearsal last night. What is all this? This is Sheldon Craig's last review of Elliot Dorn, Doctor. Read it to him, Leo. Actor slays critic. Succumbing to the blandishments of a certain playwright, your correspondent violated two personal rulings of long standing last evening by attending a summer theater and catching the dress rehearsal of Rendezvous with April. For the record, let us state that Elliot Dorn has arrived. Indeed, this critic congratulates Judith Haskell for picking Elliot Dorn as the lead for her new play, certain to be the hit of next season. Let Broadway ring with the news. Elliot Dorn simply slays Sheldon Craig. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. Each Wednesday night at this time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal sends birthday greetings to all Girl Scouts and a wish for the success of this year's big project, Clothes for Friendship. If you would like to help in clothing the destitute children overseas, call your Girl Scouts office tomorrow. Featured in tonight's story were Joseph Kearns, Eleanor Audley, and John Brown. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Leslie Edgley and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. Now I'd like to repeat this special announcement for California listeners only. Due to the change to daylight saving time in California, the whistler will be heard next Wednesday an hour later at 8.30 instead of 7.30. Remember the time, 8.30 for California listeners only. In all other areas, the whistler will be heard at its regular time. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>